Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this general problem, they tell us that Heather and Jerry are standing on a bridge 50 meters above a river. Heather throws a rock straight down with a speed of 20 meters per second, and Jerry, at the exact same time, throws a rock straight up with the same speed, and they tell us that we can ignore air resistance for the problem. For part A, we need to figure out what the difference in time is between the two rocks hitting the water, and then for the second part, we need to see which one was faster. I always like to start off by drawing a picture of what's going on. It helps to conceptualize it, and if you get stuck, it helps you to kind of think through the problem. So Heather is throwing it straight down, and her initial velocity is a negative 20 meters per second. The delta y will be the same for both, which is negative 50 meters. Acceleration is also going to be the same for both, which is negative g. The time, we're not sure what it is for Heather, and we don't know what her final velocity is going to be. And Jerry, what he's doing is he's throwing his with a positive velocity. It will come up and then come back down and then go into the water as well. So his, since it's going in the positive y direction, his initial velocity is going to be a positive 20 meters per second. And then all of the other values will be the exact same. The delta y is the exact same. Don't let that confuse you because we're starting out at the exact same point. And so it doesn't matter that Jerry's is going up first because where it starts to where it ends is the difference or the delta y and that will be the same as Heather's. So they'll both be a negative 50 from where they started to where they ended. In part A, we need to figure out the time for both of them. We're going to use the exact same equation for both and it's y final is equal to y initial plus initial velocity times the time plus one half times the acceleration times the time squared. We're going to say that down here where the water is, that is y equals zero. So let's draw that. So there's the water, y equals zero. And so where they're starting is y equals 50. So let me change this. Let's change it to a positive 50. So now when we do this, we'll have zero is equal to, let's rearrange it. Yep, you see where I'm going. We're going to use the quadratic a t squared plus v i times t plus y initial. So the acceleration we talked about is negative g, so that's one half times a negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and that's multiplied by t squared, plus the initial velocity for Heather, in this case, is a negative 20 times t, plus the delta y we said was a positive 50 meters. So our a, this is ax squared plus bx plus c, that's all equal to zero. So our a in this case will be a negative 4.9, our b is a negative 20, and our c is a 50. So we go to polysolver ax squared plus bx plus c, our a is negative 4.9, it's there already. The b we said was a negative 20 for Heather, and then the C is going to be 50 for our delta Y. So the time is either 1.75 or it's a negative 5.9, but obvious, or 5.8, excuse me, but obviously we can't have a negative time. So the time for Heather, time for Heather is 1.75 seconds for how long her rock is in the air. We're going to be using the exact same formula for Jerry. We just need to change the initial velocity. It's the only thing that's different. So our A for Jerry, let's put a, let's do a different color to show the difference for Jerry. So our A for Jerry is also going to be negative 4.9. B for him will be the initial velocity of a positive 20, and C will also be 50. So when we go back to our polysolver, a negative 4.9, and then we're going to have a positive 20 and 50. So for him, the time will be the 5.83. 5.83, and you'll see the other one is, so it just basically flip-flopped, right? We have the 1.75 or the 5.83. So we have the two times now. So now that we have the two times, we can calculate what the difference is. But we'll do 5.83 minus 1. 75 
5.83 minus 1.75 give us a difference in time of 4.08. So we'll just say four seconds is the difference in the time for when the rocks hit the water. Now we need to figure out which rock was going faster or was it the same? This is actually pretty cool to see this. It might kind of blow your brain a little bit, but let's show you. The equation that we'll use is V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times the time. So let's do it for Heather first. So her V final is going to be equal to a, the velocity initial was negative 20 meters per second plus the acceleration we said is negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the time for her is 1.75 seconds. So for Heather, we have negative 20 plus a negative 9.8 times the time of 1.78. So we have negative 37.44, negative 37.44 meters per second is the final speed for Heather's rock. Let's do the same thing for Jerry. So his final velocity will be equal to his initial velocity of 20 meters per second plus a negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the, his time, which was 5.83 seconds. So we have 20 plus negative 9.8 times his time, which was a 5.83. With that, negative 37. And if we would have kept the numbers going more instead of rounding just to the 5.83 and the 1.78, they would be identical. So we have negative 37 rounded, and then this one will also be negative 37 rounded. So what we just proved with the kinematic equations is that because they both had the initial velocity, even though Jerry threw his up, when it comes back down, it'll stop, hang out. For so it's going to come up, it'll stop for a second, and then by the time it gets here, it's going to be the exact same speed that he threw it. But because he had the same initial velocity going up, it'll be the same initial velocity going down. So Heather and Jerry are essentially both throwing the rocks at the same speed downwards, which will give them the exact same speed by the time they hit the water. So neither one is going faster, they're going the exact same speed. And here are your answers, four seconds in between the two and negative 37 meters per second for both of them, meaning that they're both going at the exact same speed.